Hello everyone and thanks for joining me for another video. In this one you're going to see some of the same footage from the first board box video but with quite a different spin or wrinkle. We're going to take it and go a different direction. The wheels were already turning on this one when I got a really observant comment on the first one from Cooper Gates. He asked if all these shots are so bad then why are most of them dead flush? There's an easy answer but it comes with quite a few talking points and on edit here this ended up longer and heavier than I thought it would but it kept coming out so I went with it. The reason so many of these shots struck despite the decent but not great shot quality is because this is a house shot or basically a house shot. It's kind of a modified Kegel Chromium really and that to begin with with all other answers or explanations aside is the biggest part of it. Now I'm going to compare two lane patterns on the screen here. One's probably the most brutal shot in existence in red square which is on the left and Kegel Neon which is basically a recreational house or league shot type pattern which is on the right. Red square is basically unfair, and without getting into lane pattern nuances, it's 40 feet, so medium length, 25 mils or 25 milliliters of oil, which is medium again, and it's completely flat, so we're doing a heckin' brutality. You're either perfect or you're not striking, and I mean speed, rev rate, tilt, rotation, targeting, all on point. If you miss and want to hope to get lucky, you have to have a big offsetting miss. If you tug it, but also throw it too hard, you might get a break. If you leak it right, but get slow, it might get back, etc. Now speaking from a right-handed perspective, if you miss right, it's going to hang. If you miss left, it's going to take off. And for most people, urethane is going to be the play, mostly to blend uh, the back ends out and allow you to execute a reasonably comfortable shot. Now, neon is the opposite. There's tons of volume in the middle, not much outside. So if you miss right, there's friction to help the ball hook. If you miss left, there's oil to help the ball skid. Offsetting misses on this type of shot have the opposite reaction. And that's why so many people have trouble adjusting to sport patterns is because the way to play them and the misses you're allowed to make most of the time are completely opposite. If you build your game around house shots and then go bowl sports stuff, you're naturally going to have issues. Now, if you get slow and miss right, well, it's really going to take off. Now, if you get fast and miss left, it's just never going to wrinkle. House shots condition you to kind of circle the middle and bump the friction outside to get the ball to shape. Sport shots condition you to avoid the hang that's on the outside or to just get really good with speed and rev rate control like like Chris Prather or Francois Lavoie, for example, or mostly to soften your hand up. I prefer sport patterns myself because despite the difficulty, the focus is on execution, not necessarily getting a handful. Rev rate and overall power is still helpful, but much less important on sport patterns and accuracy, while on house shots, you don't have to be nearly as accurate. However, there's still some skill to be had there, as well as some learning and knowledge. Most better bowlers will instantly dismiss Cooper's initial question by saying, well, it's a house shot and moving on, which realistically, that's the short and most accurate answer. However, the USBC average average is somewhere around 175, which means that's what most bowlers tend to average, and that's not killing it by any means. Uh, just saying it's a house shot can be kind of rude and insensitive to people still trying and learning and struggling even on house shots. So we're going to talk about the details here and how to get good as they say. House shots are completely counterintuitive to begin with. It doesn't fundamentally make sense to your brain to throw the ball to the right and have it go further left than if you throw it further left in the first place. Sport patterns make much more sense. You leak it right, it's gone, tug it and it's moving, but of course that makes them a lot harder. Learning how to beat up a house shot is still a skill though, and based on your ball reaction, you build a picture of the pattern in your head, but you have to make sure that you see what you think you're seeing, which goes back to the board box idea in the first place. I've seen people throw two very dissimilar shots, have two different results of course, yet come back and complain that the, the second shot didn't hook, or it overhooked, or well it struck last frame and they threw it exactly the same this time. Now board box will definitely tell you where you're hitting, but like I said last time, you can also use it to judge shot quality in other areas. If you hit the same boards twice in a row and get different results, it's not the lanes. Take these two shots with the Rubicon here. So if I'm going through the nose, throwing it 14 to 10 on the first shot, and then striking, albeit high flush on the next one, what did I do or what did I change to make that happen? We're going to loop through these several times here and try to key in on the differences. What did my speed look like? What did my angular rotation look like? What did my rev rate look like? What did my tilt look like? Higher speed is going to reduce the hook. Uh, flattening out my angle of rotation or the direction the ball is rolling in will get it to go straighter down lane. Taking a few revs off will also reduce the hook and adding tilt will get the ball through the front a little easier but usually make it bouncier down lane. Now watch my release on the first shot when it went high. There's some extra wrist action there. I help it a bit so I'm making the reaction earlier or I got more of it than I wanted to so revs are a bit up and speeds a bit down. 
Now the following shot that strikes, I made an adjustment. I didn't move my feet and I didn't move my target. I just quieted my wrist down and got out of it cleaner and easier. Now it still wanted to go high, but it held pocket because of the release tweak. So now we move on and look at the next couple shots. I move a bit deeper with my feet, but if you'll notice, I've been really up the back of it with the Rubicon the whole time here. So it's more of a hook set reaction, but it's sharp enough that if I get around it too much, it's, it's flying. So laying out of it or straightening out the ball path allows me to stay straighter with it and not play so much angle. However, it's wanting to hook, so I'm moving. The 15 to 11 shot was a flat tug. 15's where I wanted it at the arrows, but I was looking more for 8 or 9 down lane. However, I was a little concerned it wasn't going to make it back up the hill or was going to be flat, so the natural miss was a tug. The next move is to go back to the left and give the ball more room down lane. It was at this point where I finally realized my shoulders were too close, but most of the time it takes me getting deeper to realize that. The 14-9 to 9 shot was money. It's exactly what I wanted to do, but it went a little too long, and despite being a good shot that struck, it kicked the 7. I didn't want to count on that continuing to happen, so now that I know what I'm doing, we're going to tighten up a little bit more because of instead of, uh, because instead of shoving or wrapping it at the bottom, which was slowing my release down, now that I got my shoulders open and could more freely project the ball, I'm going to be able to get it down the lane easier. The next two shots cross 13 at the arrows and 7 at the break point, which create another great illustration. I got a little too easy with it and wrapped the 7. The next shot, I threw it way too good and it never saw the spot at all. So let's rewind and compare the last six shots and watch the progression of shots and the moves I made in just those six. 14 to 10, got grabby, nosed it for a 4-7. The next shot, 14 to 10 again, I got a little softer with the hand, let it go, high flush but strike. Move in a little, tug, but the move kind of helped keep it on line, and then hashtag twisters. Um, oh, cool. Open the shoulders, you horse-faced ginger. Perfect. 14 to 9, but the ball got down the lane a little too far. Feet further left, got the break point. Further out to catch the friction to firm up the move down lane. 13 to 7, great shot, still a little late down lane. 13 to 7 again, way too good of a shot, way too clean off my hand. Okay, let's tighten up again. Roll tape on the next shot. 12 to 6, super hard wrap on the 7. Those we can live with though. Flat corners tell you that you're likely playing too much angle or throwing it too hard or in the wrong part of the lane using the wrong ball or a myriad of other problems. Hard wraps like this let you know that you're really close. The ball's just going a hair long. There's several adjustments you can make here. You can either square up and straighten up some more if you like throwing it hard. Or you can stay where you're at and soften up. Or you can even get back a little deeper and soften up more. Because as you soften up more or lower your speed, increase your revs, get around a little more, what have you, the angles might not allow you to do that and still get the ball down the lane from straighter. Now on the right side, this is a pretty common move if you're getting tapped and messing with angles. Taking a big step left and hitting it more is a big brain move. The pros do it all the time. That gives you the oil and the angle to allow you to really rev it up more and make sure it corners. So let's see what we did here. I moved back in and got too soft, but it's another 14 to 10 shot again. So let's put all three of those together, all, all the 14 to 10 shots. Let's put those three together and see what happened. Too much wrist action on the first one. Release was too slow and muddy. Next one's better. Softer hand got it to hold. Spun it a bit really. The number three was just way too slow. And we'll cycle back through these three a few times. The first one you can visibly see me mucking up the release. I mean, I tried to get a handful. In addition to it being too slow, it was a grab. Too many revs and you can actually visibly see the over revving of the ball and see it struggling to get down the lane. Next shot was pretty decent. More off the back of it, added a little tilt or spun it a little bit. The break point is ultimately still too snug, but it was a reasonably good shot. If I let go of that shot and that's as bad as my misses get, I'm going to be happy. Shot three was just slow, period. Slower feet, slower roll, slower speed, everything. But if you'll notice, I was still soft and smooth with my hand at the release. I didn't grab it. So let's rotate shots one and three here. The first one was a big grab. Put the ball on the struggle bus, definitely not happening. Shot three was actually a really quality shot in terms of tempo, timing, release, shot shape, everything. It was just an over adjustment in terms of my overall speed. All right, so now that you know what I'm looking at, what I'm looking for and everything that I'm looking at, let's roll back through the Rubicon footage as a whole and see exactly what happened. Watch the progression of what happens, what I leave, and the subsequent moves. I wasn't comfortable with the speed, so I moved in to soften up, then I drive by an eight. Then I dump it, then I grab it and elbow it, then I dump it again, then I start moving to give myself more room, then there's the several shots that we stopped and broke down. 
Now, despite these not looking like big misses or appearing to be much of a problem, it's cleaning up this stuff that's absolutely critical and watching all this back with a super critical eye, I'm sure that you can see much more now from shot to shot than even what I talked about. All of a sudden you're seeing, oh yeah, he got up the back of that one, oh that one he spun too much, well there he was too quick with his feet, or he got around that one too much, so instead of just watching the numbers on the boxes and whether the ball struck or not, now you should be seeing why I hate this footage so much. For this look right here, the Rubicon needs the shine knocked back off so I can square back up and blend everything. With the lane shine, it's too quick from straighter, it's a little too long from deeper, so by sanding it back down, I'm making it earlier but also greatly reducing the friction response. Now let's look at the trend, which is a much better fit reaction-wise in addition to me figuring out my mechanical issue. Watch everything, just like we did with the Rubicon. I moved around here just for the sake of moving around, but the conclusion that everyone should arrive at here is that my best look was the first couple of shots around 11 at the arrows. Once I started getting deeper, I had to help a little bit, and that's when I started getting the taps, but the first several shots noticed that I had a lot of room down lane. I was getting it out to 6, and it was reading nice, getting it into 9, and it was holding, and this is the whole point of the video. You have to develop a super critical eye for everything that's going on at every point in your shot. At a certain point, it's so ingrained that you actually begin to feel what's comfortable and what's right and what isn't. Walking the trend in from just that little couple board swing, the first few shots was the best look I had throughout this entire thing. That's what you should notice and key in on. I had the six board, probably even out to four if I really tested it, and I had the nine board to the inside. So I found the right ball, the right line, it gave me lots of misroom down lane, and that will get you comfortable, that'll make you relax, which will help and improve your execution, and the dominoes just fall from there. Thanks once again for slogging through all of this, but I'm sure you learned something. So now I want you to go back through the first board box video and watch the whole thing start to finish and tell me what you see now. Thanks for watching and may the strikes be with you.